Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSSTricks.com with video screencasts uh, number 24 it looks like. Getting up there in numbers. This week I am going to show you five, five different ways to make a box with rounded corners on a website. There's tons of ways to do it. You've probably heard, you've maybe done a couple of them. Uh, but there's lots of different ways to do it. There's lots of advantages and disadvantages to doing it different ways. There's ways with lots of markup and less markup and extensible ways and cheating ways and all kinds of different ways. I'm going to show you five different ways. You can pick and choose amongst them. Of uh, Next time you need to know how to do it, you'll have an arsenal of different ways uh, that you can go about doing it. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to... One of the CSS Trick sponsors, Kick Apps, a couple weeks ago we introduced you to them, just kind of what they do. They're kind of like social media content, a really easy way to integrate social media stuff onto a site. Um, instead of just kind of talking in general terms about what they do, check out the Bonnaroo site. Bonnaroo is this big uh, music and arts festival in Tennessee, or at least it was when I went for the first year. Um, look at this whole site. It's a really cool site. Like the whole site is powered by Kick Apps. All this... Uh, all this widgetry and videos and commenting and everything. Check out just this widget right here was built with, with Kick Apps. Um, look at all these videos and stuff. Let's just jump right into a video just for fun. All this stuff is powered by Kick Apps and it's stuff that you can build uh, with no problem with their basically with their widget studio you log into kick apps with your account which is really easy to sign up for and go under this deploy tab and click the widget studio it's this new feature they have in beta and I already have a widget I created but I can create another one here it's really kind of easy thing to do you can set up sizes here look at that recent videos that just generates I can change the color of stuff it's really easy I can change the font that's used if I like serif fonts that kind of thing uh, I can add components like a button let's say I, I like this widget but I want to customize it a little bit throw this button down here I can have it go to a URL of my choice if I want it to say like you know read my blog and I can go ahead and make that a real live button no problem uh, there's you know they have different pre-made widgets you can check out they have you know different elements you can drag in here that I don't I'll make a big mess if I start doing this stuff but uh, different elements you can control everything you can control what it does look you can have uh, uh, me, you know have it pull from feeds just really create your own dynamic widget thing preview it check it out and then um, basically publish the thing save it I already made one called that so I'll save it too and they'll give you the code just like any other widget that you can copy and paste right into your website and and deploy this brand new widget that you made really quick and easy and you can make a site that's as cool as like Bonnaroo's site in no time at all kick apps handles all the social media stuff like that for you so check out kickapps.com now let's get started with this rounded corners business so this is what our page looks like right now. Nothing, just a title and a paragraph element. I'll jump over into TextMate, which is where we'll be writing our code, just page declaration, a title, link to a style sheet. Everything's in a page wrap, just like how we start almost every one of these tutorials. But we're going to be making some boxes. We're going to be making five boxes, and I hope to not drag this on too long. Uh, but let's just jump into it right away. Here's the first technique for a rounded box, which is what I kind of call the cheating technique but we're gonna give it a div of a box of class of box one and close out that div and then we're gonna put some text inside of it and in uh, TextMate you can just go lorem tab and fill it out with a bunch of text close that off the p tag uh, okay we're gonna be building this one with straight up with with graphics that we're going to make in Photoshop. And that's why I kind of call it the cheating way. It's not really cheating, but uh, it's it's just making these rounded corners with straight up graphics. You'll see what I mean. So I made a new graphic here. It's about 350 pixels wide by 150 pixels tall. I filled the background with white. 
I drew a rect rounded rectangle in there. It's black. And I added some styles to it, just like a, a darker brown border and a light brown kind of tan inside. So that's where we're at right there. Now we're going to go ahead and crop the whole top of this box off. Crop it down, save for web and devices. And then we will save it to our desk, into our images folder as box one top. And then just to save a little time, we will just flip it right around, flip it vertically, save it as box one bottom. Let's go back in time a little bit, slice a little sliver out of the middle. We're going to call that box one middle. All right, now let's back up in time a little bit before we whisk this thing away. And in our box, we're going to just call that image for the top and the bottom. Source is images slash box one top dot ping. We got to give it to stay standards compliant. We got to give it an alt tag, but very specifically going to leave it empty because it has no alternative meeting. It is purely for looks. So that's one of the problems with this technique, but it works. So let's let's just see where we're at. We'll go on here and and jump in. Um, there's the two graphics. I forgot to switch switch out one for for the bottom. So we'll just do that quick. But you can see that uh, we need that middle in there too. So that's where the CSS comes in. Let's start writing the CSS for this box. Box. Uh, we'll call it box with a class name of box dash one we're gonna make our boxes 350 pixels wide just like our graphic is let me just see what I was doing here and the whole the whole thing is gonna have a background image of that middle that we that we sliced out images slash box one middle dot ping uh, we want it to be in the center and repeat vertically which is repeat Y and then just for visual to separate it from other boxes that we're going to create let's give it some top and bottom margin let's take a look at how we are doing there we go that's a rounded corners box but the text is sticking out of it a little bit so let's look at the CSS again we have a width element on this box and generally to be smart. Uh, we don't like to apply padding, width padding, to a, uh, the same, any element that has width too, just because of IE6's uh, uh, box model stuff. So we're going to add some padding, just width padding, because kind of those top images kind of already take care of our, our top padding for us, into a div with a class of inside, inside of it. So we'll go ahead and put this div around this text. You know, we could probably, since P's are blocks too, we could have probably done this to the P to stay cleaner, but this kind of makes sense to me. So let's go ahead and reload there. And now we have a nice, our text fits nicely into our rounded corner box. So that is technique number one. All right, so for box number two, we're just going to copy the markup that we already have for box two and paste it in here. Change the class to box two, and we are not going to use the same image technique. Uh, we are going to use the same class of inside, though, because that was kind of useful. And uh, But what we are going to do is we're going to apply the corners in a different way. We're going to apply four corners to this thing, basically by setting position relative on this parent object and uh, uh, using four little empty divs I'm just gonna paste them in here to save time a div with a class of top right top left bottom right bottom left and we're gonna use those four empty divs to place the four corners so let's jump over to Photoshop and get those four corners out in order to uh, just get this pixel perfect like we need what we're gonna need to do is uh, trim it to get rid of all that white around it so it's cropped right exactly perfect how we want it so let's grab this and cut out a corner, the top left corner. Did that get it just right? It looks a little off to me. What's wrong? Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. 
We'll grab that corner again. And I'll, oh, I see what I was doing. I was trying to hold shift while I was doing this to get a perfect square, but that's about good. That's the top left corner, so we'll save that out as box to top left. And we'll use the same little trick before and just kind of rotate our way through these. Top right. Ninety degrees for our bottom right. This won't take but a minute, folks. <laughs> and our bottom left. So we're going to have to write some CSS after we back out to reality to take care of these empty divs that we threw in there. So we're going to need some C general CSS for the box. Um, and because we're just applying these corners to the corners. We don't have any graphics dealing with like the middle and the innards of the box. We're going to actually need to create a border and a background color as a part of the whole adventure here. So with, we'll keep it at 350 pixels like the other one. And let's give it a background color. Now you would go into Photoshop and grab that eyedropper tool and click on that thing and figure out the hex code. I just happen to have it handy and I'm trying to get through this pretty good. So I just copied and pasted it here. We're going to also make a border that's the same color as the graphic above it. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste it here. And the thing is we're going to need this position relative on the parent in order to get those divs where we want them to be and then again uh, just some padding so it plays nice with our other boxes in the future. So let's write the CSS for all those graphics that we made. The top left corner is going to have a width of, now I don't remember what the size was that we clipped out, so let's whisk these away and get the top left one get info on it. They are 14 by 14 pixels each. So width 14 pixels. Height 14 pixels. We don't have to like set display block or anything. That's why we use divs because they have a default display value of block. So I can set these width and height and know that that box is going to be 14 pixels by 14 pixels. And it's in the images folder and it's box 2 top left box to dash top left ping and we don't even have to worry about repeating or anything because the graphic is the exact size of the box that we are putting it in but we do need to position it uh, instinct might tell us top zero left zero we'll check that out and see how it looks in a second just for fun we'll pop over and take a look at how we're doing I must have not saved the markup. Save. Okay, we got the box, it's got the right color, it's got the right border, but our image showed up in a weird spot here. Top left. What did I do wrong? Basically, I think we want this top to be negative one pixels and left to be negative one pixels. I'm, I'm struggling to understand why it made it on the bottom. Oh, it's obviously it's because we need to absolutely position it within our relative parent to get it where we need to go. Absolute. Now I already did the negative one pixel trick. I'll, I'll reload it here and it'll show up right where it needs to show up. We'll deal with the spacing later, but if I didn't put negative one, it, there would have been a little one pixel kind of offset here. It was just kind of necessary for the, for that to work properly. Let me just, instead of writing out all of the rest of them, I'll copy and paste them from kind of my secret off-screen location here. And paste in the rest of them only in 
my example they're 14 so let me change those values quick and we'll pop over and take a look perfect the corners are in there we're going to use the same technique with padding uh, we already have uh, uh, that inside div all ready to go on box number two so we just got to style that up for box two give it some padding we'll give the padding all the, just a single value so it goes all the way around this time because we're going to need that top padding too and reload and that is technique number two for getting yourself rounded corners now they're in the markup for this one there's all kinds of extra code there's all you need four images instead of three like why would you use this technique well it's because I can jump it over into my CSS and change this to 300 instead of 350 go back to Safari reload and it doesn't it's not dependent on on graphics like that sliver that we use to repeat on this top one I can't resize the width on the fly like that I don't have that extensibility so this technique if you need different widths is kind of a good way to go alright so let's make our third box again let's just copy one that we've already done uh, we're not going to use these things this time. We're going to call it three. We're going to stick with our inside thing because I'm sticking with that, that it's important to not declare padding and width on the same objects. So we'll leave it as that. And we'll jump over to our CSS. And it's going to be a little bit similar to box three in that we're going to need to declare a border and background color and stuff. But we're not going to need position relative because there's not going to be anything inside of it, really. But what there is going to be is uh, a, a Mozilla, a Firefox only specific CSS statement called Moz Border Radius. We've been making it about 12 pixels. And we'll save it. And we're going to need padding again so it looks right. We'll save that, jump back over to Firefox, reload didn't save one of the files I'm sure oh, three reload where's our border must have deleted it on accident my bad I'll throw that in there but you saw that it was a good start huh same looks exactly the same no additional markup nice looking borders Problem is, only works in Firefox. If I were to pop this page open in Safari, it would just be square corners. So this is a really lightweight, really quick, really easy, nice way to make rounded corners. Only works in Firefox. That's it. It works in Firefox 2, and they don't look super duper great in Firefox 2. It will round the corner, but they look a little jaggedy, not great. kind of depends on if you use like really light colors, they look all right. But Firefox 3, they look fantastic. So if you know your audience, know that a lot of them are using Firefox, these rounded corners aren't absolutely dependent for your design. It's just a nice touch. Think about using this, this Moz border radius. It's a nice way to do it. So that's technique number three. All right, so let's look at technique number four. Again, we're copy our markup, change the class to box four. This time we are going to use jQuery. You basically go out and Google jQuery rounded corners. There's a really nice one. It's just called, I think it's just called corner or something. We already have, this is the project folder for this project already through the latest version of jQuery, which is 1.2.6 and the corner plugin in there. So we got to go back up to the head section. TextMate script src tab. Maybe does that little shortcut for that, and we can just include jQuery dash one point two point six dot min in there, and we'll and we'll copy and paste and get our jQuery dot corner dot js. That one's called dot corner. Yep. So that's the two files necessary to include on our page in order to do it this way. Uh, and then. This is how we actually write jQuery script type text JavaScript. And close the script tag. Okay. And then there's a uh, you know the the standard little way to 
write jQuery is when the DOM is ready. Do some stuff, and we'll close that. Basically, to call this plugin, you give it the class name, and you call the corner function on it. Looks like that. This is targeting the, the page element on our page with a, a, a class name of box-4, and that's calling the corner thing on it. Save it. Did we do any CSS for box 4 yet? No, but we're going to need to. We need very little. It's kind of like box 3, I guess. Only we're not going to use this. We are going to need the background color. And there's a little caveat with the border color. I'll save it and look and reload it in Firefox. Boy, that's not working. Let's troubleshoot a little bit. What did I do? I first didn't do that, which is pretty important. But this is called box four, right? I'll save it. Reload it. There's the corner. Now we have some errors. We can always pop open to look. It's not finding the function. So I probably referenced something incorrectly. Let's look at the head. JavaScript. Always nice to copy the. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't put dot js at the end there. Hey, that looks like it should do it though. Yep, that works. So see these nice rounded corners on here. It worked like a charm. Requires no uh, extra markup. It's really easy to implement. You can target anything on the page, multiple items, multiple boxes, whatever. It's just one, you know, include the jQuery, include the plugin, target an element, get around in corners. But it didn't live. The, the uh, uh, border didn't live. The border's not going to be compatible with the plugin. But what is compatible is all kinds of different options. You could do square corners and beveled corners and dog ears and target individual corners do all kinds of stuff with this plugin I'm not going to go into but that uh, you can use jQuery in that way to get rounded corners with the plugin or and I'm going to show you the fifth way in a second that also is going to use jQuery that uh, will work might work for you so let's make box five one last time our last technique here also utilizing jQuery uh, it's going to be a little bit like box 2, actually. So let's copy everything from box 2, only we'll call this box 5. It's going to utilize that same thing where we're going to drop all these extra divs into box 5. But instead of doing it right in the markup, which you'll see is just kind of ugly and kind of unsemantic to have all these extra divs in there that you're not going to use. You can use jQuery to apply them. So let's grab all of them that we want to apply to box five. And basically you can make, you can t take any HTML and make it a jQuery object. So let's Take all those divs, and we're going to have to use single quotes here because jQuery likes it when, if you use double quotes in your object here, it's going to want single quotes here. And then just use the append to built-in function, and we're going to append it to the object box 5. So that's all it is. Take all, you know, take all these elements and just put them in box 5. That way our markup stays clean. But ultimately, when the page is rendered, it gets those extra divs shoved inside there. So it keeps your code clean uh, by applying that HTML via jQuery. Pretty slick, huh? So that's kind of a cool way to write it. And, you know, instead of, let's say you had five boxes that you all wanted to apply around in corners to, instead of, you know, that'd be 20 empty divs on your page for no reason you know ultimately in the, in the dom we can inspect with firebug and see that these divs get applied but it stays out of your code it keeps the readability of your code better and that's the important part so so there you have it folks five different ways of making rounded corners on your website 
So remember that you can always go to css-tricks.com during the week for more tips and tricks. You see I got a little bit of a new logo this week and cleaned up a little problem we had with the tag and the header and how it get a little offset. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but, you know, we got that going on for us. Um, and always remember we can visit our sponsor, PSD2HTML, for converting your Photoshop documents into standards-compliant XHTML and CSS. So I think next week we're going to get started uh, designing for WordPress. But if you need a head start with that and need to get some WordPress done right away, PSD to HTML can handle that for you. You can design something up in Photoshop, send it over to them. They ask you some questions. You pay them a very reasonable price, like 150 some bucks for a one page design or whatever for a static design. They will send you back. Uh, a beautifully designed, encoded, smart code, semantic code. I've used them myself and liked them. So they got a money back guarantee. So if you're in the need for a quick conversion of your design, check out PSD to HTML. Until next week, see you later. Bye.